Hawks just behind Brockport, a game behind Brockport. So they're not officially out of the standings, but they're going to need to win, win some games down the stretch and hope for Brockport to lose and go for that sixth seed and be the underdog that we've been used to seeing them for the past few years. Yeah, so the one person to watch out here for the Plattsburgh State Cardinals, I would say, would be Taylor Clare. She is a freshman from Peekskill, New York. She's a biology major here at Plattsburgh. And, you know, she's put up some good numbers, 14 points uh, three times. The last time she's done that was at Oswego on January 13th. Uh, she also put up double digits and rebounds, uh, 12 rebounds earlier this month on the 4th of February uh, but one thing about her is she gets in foul trouble early she gets foul trouble a lot so if she can stay out of foul trouble give Plattsburgh a chance to kind of dominate down low between her and Franny Merkel who uh, tallied her seventh double double of the year and 20 minutes off the bench as she notched game highs in points and rebounds and Jax Miller tied Merkel for the game high in points which was 14, while Anna Thompson added 11 off the bench. Those are numbers from their last game in which they played at Potsdam, and they won. A pretty low-scoring affair, 46 to 42. Middlebury, if you're, if you're Mid Middlebury, you got to watch out for Franny Merkel. It's her freshman year. She's from Brewster, New York. Like you were mentioning, she had picked up her seventh triple, seven double-double. Triple-double would be amazing, but seven double-double is also very good. But she's learning from the best. You have assistant coaches, Devona Paul and Yasmin Lewis, who are two of the best postal players in Plattsburgh State history teaching you. So when you're a player who's very similar to Devona Paul and you have Devona Paul coaching you, you should, be, you should be set. Right, and that's, that is the one thing, though. The first takeaway when we called the first game of last semester, I, I saw Freddie Merkel on the floor, and I, I thought it was Devona Paul. I mean, they play very similarly. They play... Um, they look very similar. They wear the same number. And, you know, I knew Paul had graduated, but Merkel is stepping in and filling those shoes quite well. Another player to look out for is Bella De Pasquale. She, it's her sophomore year. She came off the bench last year, and she was shooting lights out for so many games. Definitely, she definitely has the hot hand coming out of the game. I've seen a few times this season. She comes out, hits her first three threes of the game, and she might slow down for a bit. So Middlebury's going to have to watch out and make sure she doesn't heat up early on. Yeah, so Middlebury's in coming, into the game, coming into this game um, already securing the number four seed in the NESCAC tournament, which is their conference. Uh, Suniac still has some, or excuse me, Plattsburgh still has some work to do to get into a good position for the Suniacs. This would be a good momentum booster for the team. And now we're going to honor America with the national anthem with an acapella group named um, Out of Nowhere.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's see the starting lineup. And that was one beautiful rendition of our nation's national anthem. From and Middlebury, and now we're going to send it to the public address announcer to uh, announce the starting lineups for today's game. Sophomore from Ardsley, New York, number four, Bella De Pasquale. From Middlebury, at guard, a sophomore from Andover, Massachusetts, number 14, Colleen Carvey. Carvney. From Plattsburgh State, at guard, a senior from Argyle, New York, number 33, Jax Miller. From Middlebury, at guard, a sophomore from Lynn, Massachusetts, number 11, Alex Huthma. And from Plattsburgh State, at guard, a senior from Freeport, New York, number 10, Mo Jones. The Panthers are coached by K.J. Crasco in her third season. She's assisted by Jessica Turner. The Cardinals are coached by Cheryl Cole in her 20th season. She's assisted by Ben Seraf, Yasmin Lewis, Devona Paul, Those and the Brittany Marshall. For tonight's matchup, and going through the roster, you might We've seen some new faces from last year for this Plaster State roster. Only three players on this team were on the team last year, and those players are Bella DePascal, Jax Miller, and Mo Jones. Yeah, so you expect some growing pains for the Cardinals and growing pains they have had. 10 and 12 on the year, 6 and 10 on the SUNYAC, and the SUNYAC is a tough conference. Let's, let's uh, you know, respect the how difficult of a schedule they've had. Uh, but it must be very difficult trying to play with some different uh, players, basically a whole new team. Um, and you're also going to see a few different starters in the lineup than what we did at the uh, start of the year, start of the campaign, and last semester as uh, Olivia Suki has squeaked her way into the starting lineup, taking the place of Franny Merkel. Uh, Jax Miller, the senior from Argyle, New York, will be running point for the Cardinals, so watch her. Uh, very, you know, very seldomly does she play undisciplined. She's always going to have the ball at her fingertips. Watch for her to really control the, the pace of the game today. Jax Miller has been such a huge player for this Plattsburgh team for her whole career. She's hoping to go out with one last chance, hopefully making it to the SUNYAC tournament. But like we said earlier, we're going to need a little bit of help from the other teams. The explosive Mo Jones running point as usual. Plaster has got a lot of quick passes going. Have not made their way towards the basket just yet. As now Mo Jones drives and kicks it to Suki. Thought about the shot. Seven left on the shot clock. Plaster's got to get something up. Jax Miller puts up the tough three. No good as it's rebounded by Catherine Harrison. Yeah, but Miller won't hesitate to take that shot again. She loves to shoot the three-pointer, and she shoots at a very successful clip. And Coach Cole basically has uh, given her the green light to take whatever shot she feels fit. Especially knowing that this could be, this will potentially probably be her last game here in Memorial Hall. So it's got to be a bittersweet day for her. That will be a jump ball, a good hustle play by Sarah Kaufman of Middlebury. As will stay Middlebury ball. Kaufman's looking to find someone to inbound it to. Kaufman's had a very strong season for Middlebury as it's stolen by Plattsburgh is now Mo Jones is fouled on the way to the basket as that layup will not count as the foul was earlier on the floor. Yeah, but that's a great foul there on the floor by Middlebury. The foul is going to go on uh, number 14. That's Colleen Cavini. Uh, great foul because you, you stopped your momentum. You're able to get to her. Uh, put a foul on her so she, there's no opportunity for an and one. There's no opportunity for foul shots, and now Plattsburgh has to run an offense. Mo Jones drives in, puts up the tough layup, and it is good. 
Mo Jones starting the scoring for Plattsburgh. That was great athleticism. She's so strong going to the rim, and it's re she's really hard to stop, especially when she gets it right into her mind that she's not going to let up. One of the biggest pickups for Plattsburgh as the three is put up no good by Cavini. But Mo Jones, she didn't play in Plattsburgh for the first two and a half years of of her college experience. And now it's in her senior year, just a year and a half under her belt in Plattsburgh, been one of their biggest players this season. Yeah, she's taken to Coach Colt's philosophy and she's, you know, basically embraced it. She does a great job of uh, being the the scorer for the team, especially when they lost their slasher from last year uh, in Allie Taylor. As Suki was able to make that, that layup and give Plattsburgh a four point lead as the rebound is picked up by Middlebury. A lot of contact with a few players on that one. Yeah, very physical to start off. Take note of that. And the refs are going to let them play, and that's fine as long as they're consistent. As here is the nice post move. No good. Rebounded by Suki. Mo Jones controlling play. Gets it to Suki at the top, who's also got a very good shot. A lot of players on this Plattsburgh roster that I got to watch out for with their shot, especially Taylor Clare, who is her first basket of the day. And look at that. We got a tie timeout already, just two and a half minutes into the game. The sneakers always seem to be a problem in Plattsburgh State. Problem or solution? Mind is blown. I don't know how to answer that one. So <laughs> let's get back to the game. <laughs> Sorry to put you on the spot with such a philosophical question. Probably I the apologize. Toughest, toughest question I've ever had to experience in my life. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> then you've had a pretty straightforward, <laughs> easy life. As the three is put up, and it is no good. As that one seemed to almost hit the ceiling. Yeah, she almost time. hit a, a light fixture on that shot as Depa Scali's three is no good. A lot of contact, good hustle play by Mo Jones, but it's picked up by Huffman. As the layup is good for Cavini. Yeah, so far very physical for both teams. I mean, it's not just Plattsburgh. Plattsburgh's getting away with some pushes or just Middlebury's getting away with some pushes. Both teams are really fighting for that ball. And, uh, you know, a lot of contact, but the refs are letting it play out. And I've always never had a preference to if it's a physical game or if it's called really tight. The only thing is as long as the refs keep it consistent as Mo Jones gets another layup to fall, she is on fire from the start. Middlebury has no answer for Mo Jones. As we've seen that through a lot of teams. It just She might have a problem finishing every now and then, but she's so quick and she will always get to the basket. A good fake as Mo Jones is stomped on as she draws the offensive foul as Cavini cannot believe it. Yeah, that's a tough call to make because Cavini did lower her shoulder, but was Mo Jones stabilized because she was in the air? Very tough call, to call there, and I think he did a great job uh, with that particular incident. I think that, that was the right call on the floor. It was a charge. He did try to go through Jones, lower the shoulder. Now Franny Merkel is being subbed in. Plattsburgh is one of their most dominating players all season long. And now Mo Jones has a matchup to, that is favorable for her with a couple switches off the screens. As Plattsburgh comes up with the rebound, good second effort by Suki and Franny Merkel down low to tip that one out to Jones. Jones drives and kicks it to Jax Miller in the corner for three. She knocks it down. Jax Miller helps Plattsburgh bump up to an 11-2 lead with five and a half remaining. Yeah, and this is the start that Plattsburgh wanted. Get some points on the board early and start dominating the game right from the opening tip as another high arcing three falls for Middlebury Panthers. That's Kira Waldman. She's from the West Coast, a freshman from San Francisco. I wonder if she's taking kindly to the snow that we're getting here in the, uh, the northeast of America. Probably something she's never seen in her lifetime. And it's been a lot. As now Catherine Harrison will be subbed out for Lily Kuntz. And here's Bella De Pasquale getting it out to Mo Jones at the top. Five minutes remaining here in the first quarter. Remember, there's 
quarters in women's basketball and there's halves in men's basketball. You know, I thought it was going to be a huge difference at the start of the year when I read that they're going to, the women's basketball switches to corners as, as excuse me, switches to quarters as Franny Merkel makes a beautiful post move for a two-point bucket, but really doesn't really make too much of a difference. It's, you know, it's a one quick stoppage of play. It's no different from taking a timeout at the 10-minute mark in men's. As that one is switched by Kira Waldman as she's hit two threes, helping her team get back into this game, now down by five. Yeah, that was a deep three, and if I'm Plattsburgh, I'm basically just going to let her shoot that shot. I mean, that's a tough shot to make, very deep three, and uh, she let him, she, she made Plattsburgh pay for leaving her open there, but I don't think she'll make that shot consistently throughout. Good spin move by Jax Miller as it's stolen by Middlebury's. That'll be a foul called on Plattsburgh as Alex Huffman came up with the steal on that one. Yeah, it's going to be on Bella de Pascali. I thought that maybe it might be going on Jax Miller because she did come in a little bit late on a, on a reach in there, but it's going to be on uh, de Pascali. As I said, Pascali is a great three-point shooter, the 5'10 sophomore from Ardsley, New York, and really stroke it from downtown. Now, Anna Thompson getting her first action of the day, the sophomore from Poughkeepsie, as that will be a travel called against Bessie Knox. She was on the floor. She disagrees with that call, but I think the ref had that one right. Yeah, I mean, once you hit the floor, you can't roll without <laughs> dribbling the ball. I mean, you're moving without dribbling. It's no different from standing up and taking a few steps. I've learned that rule the hard way. I tried to stop, drop, and roll back in CYO basketball. Definitely uh, did not go my way. Oh, they, they let you off the bench in CYO basketball? Uh, it was late <laughs> in my later years. Uh, garbage time? Yeah, garbage time. Everyone on the court was hurt. We needed someone to play. And then you, the coach told you to stand in the corner. <laughs> yeah, I shot on the wrong basket a few times, but that's okay. <laughs> we'll get past that one. As a, a missed shot there by Middlebury. Now Plattsburgh is going to bring the ball back up the court. We're ahead by five points. Franny Merkel drives to the rim. Misses the easy layup, but a rebound by Suki. Kicks it out, and now Plattsburgh is going to reset. Here's Sarah Bonner controlling play at the top. Wonder if she's related to Mad Bonner in the NBA. Probably not. Probably, probably, wouldn't, probably wouldn't be going to Plattsburgh State, but you know. You know, probably, you know, yeah. UConn or something. <laughs> Almost stolen by Bonner. Very close to Huss on the sideline. Now Huffman will slow things down at the top of the key. As the three is put up, no good. Rebounded by Franny Merkel. Quick pass outlet to Sarah Bonner, who drives in. As now Thompson will put up the tough shot. Airballed, rebounded by Suki, who is fouled hard. And that one will be on the floor. That one will be against Lily Kuntz. Now Taylor Clare is going to step into the game for Franny Merkel. And now Merkel is not playing a lot of minutes to start off, but watch out for her to really gain some minutes going down the stretch. She's got a big post presence that really helps out in late games, getting those rebounds like Bella de Pascali is trying to do it right now, but just barely couldn't complete it. It's rebounded by the Panthers. Now the Panthers will look to slow things down. As Huffman wants the ball, not getting it from her teammate. There's Huffman in the corner guarded by Bonner as the layup will not count as there was a foul on the floor against Plattsburgh that will be the second team foul so good to see that they're not in foul trouble yeah Plattsburgh foul will be on Dave Pascali once again that is going to be her second foul I wonder if she'll be seeing the bench anytime soon as the mid-range shot is knocked down by Lily Kuntz Three-point lead as Middlebury has been fighting their way back into this one on an 8-0 run. That was great defense there by Middlebury, baiting Bella de Pascali to think that pass is open, and right when she throws that lob, someone steps over, helps her to pick it off. Fifteen left on the shot clock. This is a good pass to Kuntz. It puts up the shot, and it is good. Kuntz is feeling it right now. Now will be her second basket in the last couple possessions. 
Yeah, and Plattsburgh uh, is starting to relinquish that lead that they've had, that early momentum that they've built up. You know, a couple quick buckets and some stops will change all of that for Plattsburgh, but right now Middlebury's taking it to the cards with a minute 20 remaining in the first half, or first period. As the three was no good by Suki. Only if Plattsburgh's only hit a few threes start to off this game. I remember Jax Miller has one and that Actually, it was the only one is there. One for five to start this game from beyond the arc because that will be a foul called against Plattsburgh as this one looks like it will be on Olivia Suki. Yeah, for some reason, Suki and Claire got switched up on their assignments on the defensive uh, possession. I mean, uh, number 22 going to the line for Middlebury, that is Maya Davis. She was being guarded by Olivia Suki, and the Suki's 5'9". Davis is uh, 5'11". She looks more, she looks definitely looks taller than 5'11", but maybe around six foot or so. But Taylor Clare should be guarding her instead of the point guard, uh, Alex Huffman, where she was assigned to on that defensive stint. So watch out for that maybe later. Maybe they're trying to switch things up on purpose, but that's not a matchup that you're going to win very often. Now Middlebury has the 14 to 13 lead as they've been fighting their way back into it as Mo Jones gets the lead right back for Blasford. And Jones is finding easy lanes to the bucket and converting from there. That's going to be six points for the point guard. She hasn't missed just yet. Yeah, and she's more of a Russell Westbrook type point guard where she attacks the rim so furiously, but she's still a point guard. She, she still has the opportunity to pass, but she's more of a sh uh, scorer. She drives in, puts up the tough layup, no good. Rebounded. Well, there's a lot of contact as Huffman hits the ground hard. It'll be a jump ball, and Plattsburgh will keep possession. So now Suki's going to step off the floor, and uh, replacing her is going to be Hope Sarah Solo, the first time she stepped into the on the floor here in today's game. As the pass is getting over the top to Thompson, Plattsburgh can run out this clock if they want and hold it for the last shot. Looks like that is what Mo Jones will be doing. Guarded tightly by Huffman. Here's the screen by Sarasulo as the shot in the corner is up. No good. There will be a foul called against Plattsburgh with 1.8 remaining here in the first quarter. This will be on Hope Sarasulo. At this point, bring all the defense back and play man-to-man -to -man to full court here. See if they have any Steph Curry and them on the other team as she's gonna have to throw it up right now. She does, and it wasn't even counted as the ref blew the whistle before the shot was up. I was gonna say, at that point, you know, you, you have to throw up the shot. You know that you, there's only 1.8 seconds left. My favorite thing to do in that situation is catch the ball and try to pump fake and try to get that person up in the air and maybe draw a foul a long ways away from the bucket, but you have to get the shot off on the correct time as a replay here shows Jax Miller feeding the ball to Suki for an easy layup. One of the highlight plays here of the opening quarter of play. And you know, Plattsburgh has started off really strong and now they're starting to relinquish the, the lead a little bit. They might be distracted from that overwhelming aroma of pizza I've smelled here as the Middlebury men's teams brought a few slices into the gym with them and it's the only thing I can think about at this point. I'll be right back. I gotta go get a slice. Can you? Uh, you think you can handle the rest of the broadcast? Yeah, you're gonna have to bring one back for me as well. So. Uh, I mean, I can't <laughs> promise anything. So now Coach Curl is talking to her team, uh, and I really I don't think they have to make any adjustments at this point. Maybe try to play a tougher defense against the guard Waldman because she's eating them alive from downtown. Two for three, and they've been wide open looks, and she's made them pay. So maybe some tougher exterior defense. But other than that, I think Plattsburgh's playing pretty well. Your Plattsburgh, I would agree with you, they're playing pretty well, but maybe you get some more ball movement. They only have two assists mm. early on, and those assists are from Mo Jones and Jax Miller, and those are the two people you'd expect to get the most assists on the team, but when they only have one each. you got to have some more ball movement throughout yeah. this game. One thing I like out of Plattsburgh, though, is they're playing a lot of players here. They're going nine deep so far, so... If the stars are getting well rested and they're going to be poised to make a push at the end of the game. They're going to be, you know, fresh and probably out of foul trouble for the most part. Here's the shot 
Another high arcer, no good, rebounded by Jax Miller. You know, the high arcing three-point that we've seen a lot, so it wasn't just one fluke attempt. It's, you know, something that, that um, number 33 for the Panthers, Kaufman, uses a lot. Um, the one thing about the high arcing shot is it's hard to block, but the other thing is if it hits the rim, it comes off so hard that a lot of times they can't, uh, you're not going to get that roll um, if it doesn't swish. And there's a three-second call there on Taylor Clear. So the violation will give the ball to the Panthers. You should never be called for a three-second violation. shouldn't be that hard. I know you're trying to post up, but just to get one foot out of the out of the paint and you should be good. Yeah, it's a lapse of, a lapse of focus, really, of anything, and that's what you can't have in big games like these. This here's Huffman who runs around the court and is no good. Rebounded as Mo Jones is fouled on the rebound, or it looks like it's going to be called a travel on the floor. All right. Guess Shot. she might have moved on the floor. Yeah, I saw a little contact there though, but the contact was went unnoticed by the referee. It's going to be a traveling violation. Middlebury gets a fresh shot clock. As Coons puts it up and no good as Taylor Clare comes up with a big rebound right there. So easy for her to get rebounds at six feet tall. Just thought about the three as it's tipped out of bounds by Coons. Dan Jones had a lane to the bucket. She could have either gone left or right. There's nobody behind uh, the original defense woman, Alex Huffman. So, you know, Jones, look for Jones to attack one on one all the time, either get fouled and go to the free throw line or just get to the rim as Taylor Clare misses the easy layup off the inbounds pass from Jax Miller. Middlebury ball here with 15 14 to score. Cardinals ahead. I see Taylor Clark getting a lot of good looks. I just feel like she hasn't been setting herself. She's just forcing that shot a little bit too soon. If she gives herself another second or so, I think her shots will be a lot more accurate and she'll start to be hitting them more. And there's going to be a foul called against Plattsburgh as that will send Maya Davis to the free throw line. Yeah, jo Jones got an elbow to the head there trying to come over for help side defense. She's a little slow kind of responding. When you're a player like Jones, you're going to take a lot of hits. She's always in the play. She always gives the most hustle on the floor at pretty much every possession. As Davis hits the first free throw here for the Panthers. As now we have a 15 to 15 game. With 8.26 remaining here in the first half. As the second free throw is also good. So she goes two for two from the line. As Middlebury is back in front. Huffman thought about the steal as now Mo Jones kicks it back out to the top to Thompson. Quick passes by Plattsburgh. Good passing as Mo Jones gets it to the corner. As Mo Jones will be called for the travel as Plattsburgh had some good passing right there, just weren't able to find him. Yeah, that was a good offense. They got a lot of movement, and you know that's one thing that that gets my blood boiling when offenses aren't getting anything working on, um, you know, getting a production, getting a points. You know, they're running offenses where it's all one-on-one -on -one base. That's how you get points is when you have a lot of movement, like the way Middlebury is running their offense for a wide-open shot that falls short. Rebound, Mo Jones. Now Mo Jones will slow things down at the other end of the court. Class, we're still looking for the first points of the quarter as now Thompson puts up the tough running shot. No good. Rebounded by Kaufman. As another three is put up, this one goes in and out on the miss by Waldman. Not a bad shot if you're Waldman. She's hit too early on, so don't blame her for taking that one. As the shot is no good by Claire, who falls down after that one. A little bit slow to get up on that. Yeah, and Claire has to kind of take her time up, but she had some time to kind of size up that shot and find that corner of the square on that backboard, but instead she took, rushed the shot a little bit. She has to know she, she's a lot taller than anyone on Middlebury right here. So she has that time to kind of go up and really focus on the shot as a three-pointer falls here for the Middlebury Panthers. Mo Jones was knocked down on the floor again. And she's, like I said, always seems to be in the possession, always getting bumped around. As now Jax Miller. Not attempted a shot since that made three in the corner. 
Plattsburgh seems hesitant with some of their shots. And this one is stolen as now Huffman drives in for the layup. That is no good. A rare miss on a wide open layup. And that's, those are momentum changers, especially if Jax Miller can get this three-pointer to fall, but she can't. But, you know, missing wide open layups like that, you know, you can't do that too often and let the, the other team kind of come back uh, into the game, especially with Middlebury having the lead. You need to start widening it, widening it now and not trying to wait for the third and fourth quarters. Now here's Koos thought about the shot with 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Gets it to Huffman. We got to get something going with just five left. She drives in, puts up the layup, no good. As Middlebury comes right back up with the rebound and Koontz for three, no good. As it will sell out of bounds. And to some of our crew members over there, hopefully they're protecting that ca those cameras. Yeah, that's some expensive equipment there. One one our, uh, our advisors to have to go out and pay, pay for more uh, camera work. Coach Cole is calling out plays for her team. Such a well-respected coach throughout all of Division Three. Yeah, and it's a, a pretty re uh, respectable duo. Um, it's not just you know um, Coach Coach uh, Cole. You know, it's also Coach Ben Saraf as well. He's been with her for uh, quite a few years. Um, they developed a quite a a uh, respectable relationship. They always talk to each other before they get into a timeout. It's not just Coach Cole commanding the team, it's both of them. It's almost like having two head coaches. It's Franny Merkel who looks to complete the three point play. I'm surprised she's only been in the game for four minutes. I don't know if she has an injury or anything's bothering her, but she normally gets a lot of playing time and she's got five points already with three boards. Looking for her eighth triple double. I mean, excuse me, eighth double double. That's the second time I've messed that one up today. This is Betty, Betsy Knox gets the ball across. Plattsburgh got some nice defense right now. As the three is put up, no good as it hits front rim. And Franny Merkel comes down with the rebound on the other end to the corner. Gets back to Merkel, puts it up, and one. That's a tough play there by Merkel. And I, I see your point here, Nick, with the fact that Mer Merkel needs to find herself some more minutes on the floor. Um, maybe there is an injury somewhere. Maybe there's a, uh, sorry, maybe there's a, you know some reason why she's not playing that much, but that was a tough shot there that she got to fall, and I don't know. It looks like they gave the points, but they might not actually count it. She'll be heading to the free throw line regardless. You know, Nick, I'm a bit perplexed there because that ref definitely said count the points. Um, so did the PA announcer. So she's shooting free throws, but they might have the wrong score on the scoreboard. We'll keep you updated on that. As now it says Plattsburgh is tied 19 to 19. Well, okay then. But I'm still convinced those points might be coming back. As the second free throw is no good, but Plattsburgh comes up with another rebound as it is put up by Sarasulo. No good for Annie Merkel, still hustling and diving all over the place, but it's come up with by Huffman. So now here's Kuntz at the top of the key with four and a half remaining here in the first half. Screened by Kuntz. Now down low to Knox. The nice spin move puts it up. As it goes off her fingertips, excuse me, will go off the fingertips of Franny Merkel, and Middlebury will keep possession. Yeah, Merkel. That's one thing that Merkel brings to the table is she is a great defense. Uh, she's great at defense. You know, she's a big body that can uh, really wreak havoc, and it makes you change shots, or you have, or you get your shot blocked, as we saw in that situation there. With two seconds left on the shot clock, she gets a shot off in time, but it is air ball. So it will be a shot clock violation with 4.04 remaining. So look for Plattsburgh to kind of try to take the lead here. I think that's the main goal here for Plattsburgh is, you know, you, you'll take any lead that you could possibly get, but make sure you're not trailing at halftime, especially when you're tied at this point. Try to widen, try to, you know, widen the gap and get a few extra points here uh, and start playing from ahead in the second half. Now Jax Miller controlling play. 
She gets it to Sarah Sulu at the top as there will be a... Will that be another three second violation against Plattsburgh? Those will be an offensive three second violation, the second one of the half. And, and as we said before, it's just a lapse in judgment and a lapse of focus. And that's something you can't have in a tight ball game. Night, tight, knotted up at 19 here at Memorial Hall here located in Plattsburgh, New York as a three point attempt is off to the right side of the rim by Middlebury, it goes out of bounds. It's going to be Plattsburgh ball. Some good hustle by Sabrina Weeks on that one. Trying to save it, but she was just out of her reach. Jax Miller controlling play with De Pasquale, Merkel, Sarasulo, and Thompson on the floor. Now they'll be looking to reset things with 15 on the shot clock. Does not use the screen, kicks it to the corner. Thompson for three. No good as there'll be another jump ball. This time it will stay on Plattsburgh's end. Yeah, it's a strong play by Dave Pascali there, you know, fighting for that rebound amongst three different Panthers and holding on to the ball, getting the tie up. Plattsburgh now has nine seconds on the shot clock to make something happen. Now here's Dave Pascali thought about the shot as she'll be called for the travel. I'm, I'm not 100% sure about that one, but nobody is debating the call, so I might be the only one in the gym who thinks the other way, but I didn't see her right foot actually ever touch the ground there. You, so you're allowed to pick it up as long as you don't place it once again, but that's why I'm sitting here with a microphone in front of me and not with a whistle. That call, you see it called almost all the time when they do that pump fake as soon as they get the ball. But like you said, there was no argument from Dave Pascali, so maybe she knows she did as this will be a foul against Middlebury as it will go on Rachel Kahn's. That is her second foul already, and that's four for Middlebury, so they are very close to putting Plattsburgh in the bonus. Yeah, we've seen a lot of fouls, a lot of violations on off-the-ball um, plays, you know, a lot of screens or maybe staying in the paint too long. That's one thing that the players have to take note of is that the refs aren't just watching the ball, they're watching all over the place as De Pascali's three goes a little bit too long. As this one goes off the foot of Jax Miller. I'm surprised they didn't call a kickball if the ref knew it was off of Plattsburgh. As Jax is playing tight defense as the player almost steps out of bounds. That's a good defense by Jax Miller. And that's something she always brings to the table. Full court defense and plays hard all the time. Oh, good defensive play by Thompson to come up with that steal and read that one beautifully as she drives down on the other end. Gets it to Jax Miller as the Deep two is put up, no good. Rebounded by Middlebury. Score has been 19-19 for a good few minutes right now as the layup is up and no good as Mergel comes up with another rebound. That is her fifth rebound already. Mergel sets the screen for Jax. Thought about passing it over the top, decides better of it. Thompson almost gets called for the travel. She kicks it to Jax Miller for a three as she hits another one. Jax Miller's second three of the game. Yeah, that looked good right from the moment it left her hand. It's always, she always has that nice, repeatable stroke that, you know, a consistent jump shot that always seems to find at least the rim. And, and, this, and at that moment, it finds twine. Here's the pass down low as it's put up and there's gonna be a foul called against Franny Merkel as that will send number 22, Maya Davis to the free throw line for two. A minute 26 remaining here in the first half. Don't forget to stay tuned for our halftime show in the studio. As now Taylor Clare is coming back in for Franny Merkel at a very strong last few minutes. Tied for the lead in scoring this is a three-way tie between Merkel, Jax Miller, and Mo Jones with six points each. As both free throws fall for Davis. Now there will be a, a timeout taken by Plasberg as it will be a 30-second timeout with one minute and 22 seconds remaining here in the first half. Plattsburgh leading Middlebury 22 to 21. A very good start for Plattsburgh, but Middlebury's been fighting back, but both teams have 
had some few empty possessions in this quarter. Yeah, and that, that's a tribute to a really good defense by both sides. Both sides have kind of buckled down. Um, they've done a great job of just kind of digging their heels in and making sure that nothing comes easy. And uh, one thing that we uh, haven't really noticed so far that I'm just noticing right now is Mo Jones hasn't been on the floor, and I thought it was just kind of resting her for the second half, but she's been with the trainer for just about this entire uh, second quarter of play. And trainer's got gloves on, almost maybe looks like they're stitching her up a bit or something, but so it could be her head. It's de definitely, definitely your head. I, it doesn't look like any sort of concussion protocol or one that I'm familiar with. As Dave Pascali hits the three, her first of the game. Rough start for her, but now you got to watch out. She switches that one. One of the biggest sharpshooters on this team. A lot of contact, nothing called. Surprised that nothing was called on that one, but like you said, these refs have been pretty lenient with some of these calls. Yeah, and as long as they stay consistent, that's totally fine. As Jackson Miller goes to the left and gets blocked by uh, her opponent, Alex Huffman. As long as the refs stay consistent, I've always you know, been totally fine with however they want to call, if it's going to be tight or if it's going to be physical. But when they stay, when they start the game calling everything, or not calling everything, and then they tighten up towards the, the later part of the game, that's when things start to get a, a little annoying for the players. As Taylor Clare was fouled on that play. She'll be sent to the free throw line for two free throws with just 46.8 seconds remaining here in the first half. Plattsburgh with a four point lead. Can bring it up right now with some made free throws. Now look for Middlebury to go for what's called a two for one opportunity here. Take the ball right out of the rim after Taylor Clare either makes it or if she misses, get a very quick shot. That makes Plattsburgh having to waste as much time on the their shot clock, but it's only going to be 30 seconds. So that gives Middlebury the final possession of the game. So they take a really quick shot here, get it off before the game clock ends around 37, and then they're going to have the next possession after that. This looks like they might be going for it. Maybe not, as Davis is fouled. So maybe they were going for it with 35.7 seconds remaining. Davis will be heading to the free throw line again for two free throws. Yeah, and uh, you know they almost got it off. I think five seconds maybe not be enough depending on how Plattsburgh plays it. If uh, Plattsburgh waits all the way to like one second, then they take their shot. It's going to be a couple more seconds to get the rebound. So it's only going to leave Middlebury with three seconds to go all the way up the floor and get a, a decent shot off. It might be asking a little bit too much especially in you know women's basketball it takes a little bit a little bit longer to get the ball up the floor than what it does in men's. Maya Davis hits both free throws and here's an interesting stat she's got eight points eight for eight from the free throw line only player on Middlebury with free throw attempts that she sunk all of them. If you're Plaster you definitely don't want to foul her anymore. So here's Taylor Clare puts up the one-handed shot it looks like it might have been tipped by Kuntz as it's saved with 12 seconds left on the shot clock as now Huffman will bring it down as this will be a timeout taken by Middlebury with 7.8 on the clock. A good timeout to help hopefully draw up a play. Yeah, very smart timeout. I was just about to comment on that. You know, there didn't look like they were going to get any easy points, any uh, quick bucket. So you might as well just take a timeout, really get something to work here. If they hit a three-pointer, now Plattsburgh's only up by one. Um, and right now, if they, if they didn't call that timeout, didn't rally the troops together, it would have been tough for them to get a shot off, uh, let alone a good shot. This is a great timeout here taken by Middlebury. Just a quick 30 second, put them right back out onto the floor. And you know every coach has that go-to play that they already have in the back of their mind that they could draw up real quick for their team to follow. So that's what Coach Case, KJ Caraco is doing right here. She's in her third, se third season as coaching the Middlebury Cardinals, or excuse me, Panthers. Now, here is the inbound end, and it's stolen by Jax Miller. She puts up the lip, and she is blocked by Huffman, a huge block by Huffman, and that is definitely not the play that Middlebury drew up. Well, that was the play. That wasn't the execution of what they drew up. Now, Plattsburgh can do something here with four seconds on the shot, on the game clock. Looks like there will be a foul against Plattsburgh, so both teams are just trading the ball right now without getting any shots off. Yeah, very interesting uh, last, what, seven seconds of play here in the first half. And the trainer's looking over and talking to Coach Cole as we speak, pointing to her head, kind of telling 
Coach Cole, what's going on with Mo Jones? I don't see her on the bench right now. She might have had an early exit to the locker room. Hopefully she'll be back in the second half as she's been Plattsburgh's most explosive player throughout her whole career here. She's shooting 75% from the field and leading the scoring in a three-way tie with six points. As they gotta put up the shot, as it's put up, the high archer again does not fall, as that will do it for the first half here at Memorial Hall. Plattsburgh State leading 27 to 23 over Middlebury. Yeah, Plattsburgh taking that four point lead into the second half. And as I said before, the main goal is just take that lead. Do not be playing from behind. And I guess they must have heard me here. Maybe I'm a little bit smarter than what I look, but Plattsburgh taking that four point lead. And now they can start planning to, you know, maybe um, holding the ball, holding possession a little bit longer in the second half. Well, that will do it for our first half coverage of Plattsburgh basketball, but stay tuned as the halftime show will be right up in the studio as I'm Nick Demersion alongside Tyler Clemens. We'll see you at the next half. Good evening and welcome back to the Plattsburgh State Women's Basketball Halftime Report. I'm Morgan Ruger. And I'm Judy Romelli, and you have tuned in with us once again to see our women's Cardinals face against M Middlebury's team. So I'm guessing Cupid was in the vicinity being that our women were off to a great start tonight. They were. They came out really strong, 6-0 run. I thought they were going to dominate more than they did, though, because, like I said, they came out on that really tough run, and then Middlebury was able to catch up yeah definitely we saw how Mo Jones started this scoring right off um, with the two-pointer yeah Mo Jones has been fantastic tonight she's been a big catalyst for Plattsburgh she so far I have her down for six points and she's been driving to the basket really well which is a key Plattsburgh needs to do definitely her and, and Franny Merkel yeah she too has been really really explosive taking every opportunity she can to drive it in, drive it into the defensive player, and get those points for Plattsburgh. Yeah, I definitely saw that, you know, Franny Merkill was really good with the rebounds and just great at defense, bringing it back from, you know, one side of the court to the other. So she's definitely good at that. We also saw how Mo's name was being called throughout the entire game, you know. They were saying that, you know, she was just making shots, making shots, making shots. And we also did see her fall a couple times as well. So we just know that she heard in the game and she's, you know, ready to win tonight. Definitely. That hustle we've seen from those two has been incredible. And, you know, even the, um, the players who haven't been putting as many points up as we would expect, they too have been, all five or seven that have been in there tonight have really, really worked hard. Definitely. Which is what they need to do because I think something that's a disadvantage for Plattsburgh right now is they've been hesitant on their shots. I think both teams tonight, Middlebury and Plattsburgh, you see them kind of hesitate. They have an open shot from the perimeter or even inside of it, and they just have waited a second or two, and it's allowed the defense to catch up with them. Yeah, we definitely saw that, you know, Mo Jones and her constant layups was definitely what was getting, you know, the Cardinals into the game very strong, very well, and, you know, she was constant with those two-pointers. We definitely also saw um, Taylor Clare. She's a freshman, and she made the second shot of the game. So she, at, following that, she was also taken out and replaced by, I believe her name was, um, it wasn't Kira Walkman. It was Jack Miller, I believe. And she made you know, a score right after that. Yeah, definitely. So. And, you know, I think a big thing, too, is we saw Plattsburgh, um, you know, relinquish their lead a little bit because Middlebury went on that impressive 12-0 run in the middle of the first quarter, uh, which allowed them to catch up and make it. It was never a blowout for Plattsburgh at all by any means, but, you know, they had a fairly comfortable lead, and they – were able to catch right up and make it a really tight game. And again, those layups we've been seeing have really, really allowed for Plattsburgh to stay in this when Middlebury tends to grab the momentum. Um, and speaking of Middlebury players, I want to talk about a few of them for a minute. Um, Maya Davis, she is a freshman. Her um, rebounds tonight have been huge. She's also, she's kind of been like the uh, Franny Merkel of 
Middlebury because she keeps going up and hustling and getting those easy putbacks, which has um, brought her to the line. And Plattsburgh has paid for it because she's 4-0 from the line tonight. So, Yeah, I definitely saw, sorry for my mistakes, um, Franny Merko was the one that subbed Taylor. And less than two minutes later, she made a shot. So we definitely saw that she was in the game to win it. And, you know, constantly with the rebounds and defense, she, she, she did it. Mm -hmm. So we definitely saw that she was in for it for this game tonight as well. Yeah, and another, you know, another key for Middlebury that has allowed them to keep catching up or taking the lead or staying in the game. I mean, it's been really back and forth, as you've seen. Um, Kira Waldman, she has been explosive from the three-point line tonight. She's had six points, two really deep threes that not a lot of players can make. So Plattsburgh really needs to step up on her. It's kind of... It can be a little difficult for them, I think, with not wanting to give her too much space to drive to the basket, but also realizing that she is definitely a threat from outside. Yeah, definitely. We saw that Jack Miller was the first three of the game. And then following that, Kira Walkman was constant with those threes. So they definitely have to look out for Kira Walkman and those three-pointers because that's what can definitely make or break the game. Knowing that, you know, they did end being four ahead of um, Middlebury. Mm -hmm. And you know what else I think is really astonishing is these are two younger teams. I want to highlight that for a second. Olivia Suki, who we saw play really strong, a uh, pretty solid player the first, ha uh, first half, she is a freshman. Merkel, a freshman. Taylor Clare, a freshman. And on the Middlebury roster, um, Maya Davis, Lily Kuntz, um, Kira Waldman, all freshmen. So they are going to be really, really big contenders for years to come. They have a young team. Definitely. And hearing these names that you mentioned that were freshmen, they were, their names were being heard throughout the entire you know, first half of the game. Kira Walkman, um, uh, you know, Taylor, Claire, like they, they're definitely making a name for themselves, especially with this game, knowing that this is one of the games coming to the end of the season. So just knowing that they're in it now and they have many more years to come, Plattsburgh has it in for them for the next couple of years. I agree. We're going to see some great matchups between these two teams in the years to come. Definitely. I think um, one thing I've noticed as well is there's been a lot of easy layups missed for both teams tonight. Do you agree with me on that? Yeah, definitely. We saw that a lot happening on the Middlebury side. And we definitely need to watch out for that because that, you know, can mess up their scores. Yeah, both teams, I'm sure, are um, going to be told, you know, to clean it up a little bit underneath because there's been easy misses on both sides. But, you know, we just talked about how the teams are young, so that could still be a little bit of nerves. I mean, we do understand in. that, but as well, you know, with time, we know that they've been doing this for many years before, so, you know, I guess age isn't really what, you know, comes into play with this. It's more so your mindset in the game and how well you're willing to, you know, play the game right. It's you know? true. It's imperative. Do you Definitely. think... Maybe a lack of focus could be contributing to the hesitant shots and the missed um, layups? I think one big problem that I do see is that they're trying to take up the time so that they won't have to make up the shots because we noticed that towards the end of the first quarter, um, Mo Jones um, ended the first quarter with two points, and right after that they had about 15 seconds in the game, and she was trying to, you know, use up the time so that she wouldn't have to, you know, um, shoot the ball or, you know, so that they would be able to end the first quarter without the other team shooting a score. So we definitely see that they're trying to use up the time instead of, you know, playing the ball. Right. Yeah. And I think um, as they go forward with it being tight, we might see more of that. But I think it would be in their best interest to take shots faster and try to create more opportunities. Because I think I noticed um, – well, something I noticed from the Plattsburgh side is that they were having pretty good ball movement, getting a lot of players open. But like I said, they were really hesitant to uh, to pass, to shoot, to really do much with it. And I think that was a disadvantage for them because Middlebury has had pretty solid defense and they got to take what they get when it's open. I've seen that on Middlebury as well, too. Yeah, definitely. And taking it back into the second quarter, they started the second quarter... 15 points with Plattsburgh and 14 points with Middlebury. And they ended up bringing it up 10 points by the end of the quarter. Even so, more than that, 12 points. So the last two shots were made by Taylor Clare. And right after that, um, Middlebury were, had a foul against them, and she made two shots. 
So right after that, we did see that um, she tried to shoot again and she didn't make it. So what do you think that they should improve within the next half of the game? I think everybody just needs to be ready when they're open to shoot because that's the biggest disadvantage I've seen from both teams. They need to expect when they're open that they're going to get the ball and they have to be ready to get into position and just, you know, shoot it up there because they got to take those chances. Um, I think that's just really, really important moving forward. Yeah, definitely. We do see that they did keep it up with the defense throughout this entire game so far. So one thing we definitely want them to do is to keep it up, bring it up, bring it up. And whenever they see that Middlebury has a chance, take it back. So that's what we want to see them do for the rest of the game. And also, make sure they try to take the shots. You know, it's all about taking a risk. Do not hesitate. Just go for it. I agree. Yeah. And you know what, too? Um, just like we saw in the men's game, both of these teams have really even scorers. We have seen really good team sharing with the ball. We've seen everybody who's been out there have a couple of good um, assists and a couple of good points, good uh, baskets made. So they all are definitely capable of contributing, and it's when you get everybody involved that they're going to – that the team, I think, that gets more of their players involved and more shots up the fastest is going to win. Definitely. So who do you see winning this game for tonight? I think based on what I've seen, I'm going to bet on Plattsburgh. I think, like I said, um, we have some Jones – Claire, Merkel, Suki, um, and Jax Miller, who have really started to get into the flow of the game. I think if they can uh, continue that into the second half, that they'll be able to pull this one out tonight. Yeah, definitely. I'm going for Plattsburgh as well. You know, we did see that the men lost tonight, but the women, they have it going for them. You know, once they drop down and, you know, lose a couple points, they bring it right back up. You know, so once we see that Middlebury is catching up to them, they bring it right back up, and we're hoping that they can keep it up for the rest of the game tonight. Me too. And I think that's interesting because um, I've noticed that Plattsburgh does have a lower record overall than Middlebury, but we will have to see because I'm betting on Plattsburgh as well. So that is all the time we have. We're going to send it back to Memorial Hall for the second half of the women's game. Thank you for tuning in with us tonight.
and worn by the players. Today is the Play for K game. It's a memorial game for K Yao, the former NC State coach who had breast cancer, continued to coach through it, and has been a role model for many. Um, and she ended up losing her life to breast cancer, and this is just a way of paying homage to her as the second half is set to be underway with Middlebury taking possession first. Inbounding the ball will be Lily Kuntz. Back to what you said, the play for K, it's, it's, it's great to see all these teams doing doing this for the play for K fundraiser. And you see all these fans buying the shirts because they really do care, and it's, it's a great cause like you were saying. Yeah, and that was a great inbounds play, or great uh, opening play here by Middlebury, getting that easy layup and now cutting the deficit down to two. One thing you want to point out is that's a turnover on Plattsburgh. Mo Jones is back on the floor. We don't know exactly the details of the injury she sustained in the first half, but it's great to see her back on the floor. I saw, she fell a few times. It could have been that. She could have bumped her head, but it's nonetheless she's back and hopefully as explosive as she was early on. Yeah, and she didn't warm up. That's what I was talking about before during the halftime. She wasn't on the floor for warm-ups. So I was trying to figure out where she was. She wasn't on the bench. And for warm-ups, I thought she was remaining in the locker room, maybe getting some extra work. But she is on the floor right now. So let's see if that injury affects her game at all, if she comes back and starts playing as well as she started before. As the shot is no good by Taylor Clare. She's, she's really trying to get those post moves going, but she's one for six. So she might want to start thinking about passing it out or doing something different down low. As the three is no good, rebounded by Taylor Clare, as this will be a foul against Maya Davis. That will be her third foul, or excuse me, her first foul. And one thing I, I will expect to see Coach Cole do uh, that was different in the first half, one thing that she needs to do, I believe, is to play Franny Merkel a bit more. She has six points. She has five rebounds, and she hasn't been playing a lot of minutes so far. She's only played eight. That ball is stolen again by Middlebury. Plattsburgh's got a good amount of turnovers already in this second half. Definitely something to look out for. Now Middlebury will slow things down as Kuntz has the ball back at the top of the key. Davis down low, kicks it back out to Kuntz for three. No good. Rebounded as there will be a foul against Plattsburgh. As this one looks like it will be on Mo Jones. That is her first foul of the day. So it's a good sign to have Mo Jones only have one foul. Of course, she didn't play a lot in that first half. So it makes sense that she would only have one foul as an easy bucket by Middlebury. Knots it up at 27. Two, just over two minutes gone by in this third quarter. Plattsburgh still looking for the first basket of the half. As now Taylor Clare tries to drive in as she almost has it stolen as this will be another jump ball. That's probably the fourth jump ball we've seen in this game as this one will stay down on the Plattsburgh again. So this looks like it's going to be another low scoring affair for the Cardinals and that's kind of been their Achilles heel lately. They don't put up a lot of points. Uh, last week they won with a total of 46 as a foul was on the floor and a push called on the floor. Last week they won with a 46 spot and then they had 39 points, 46 again, that was a loss, 41, 52. And then another 46 and a 58 and a 45 following up uh, after that. So they're, they're really only averaging high 40s for point totals and it's tough to win like that. Taylor Clare, it was fouled and will be heading to the free throw line for two. As she is two of two from the line so far today. But shooting one of six from the field. As that free throw is no good, as now Middlebury will be going for a new look, bringing back in Katherine Harrison, the sophomore from Duxbury, Massachusetts. Plattsburgh still looking for their first point of the half. As both free throws are no good. Thought Plattsburgh was going to come out strong as they struggle a little bit in the second half, but still struggling in the beginning of this third quarter. Yeah, good adjustments made by uh, the coaching staff for the Panthers, really bringing it right to the, right to the Cardinals on offense. With a great rebound there by the Panthers. And Jax Miller's gonna get called for a foul. 
think she was called for the call for that foul. She didn't even have her. She had her back to the player, so I wonder where exactly she hit her. That's her first foul, but like you were mentioning, not many players in foul trouble in this game. Dave Pascali has two, and Carrizolo has three, but not really many others. Everyone else has either zero or one. Middlebury back in front, 29 to 27. The last time they grabbed the lead, it kind of motivated Plattsburgh to come back down. Mo Jones had a quick basket as this one is put up. No good, rebounded by Middlebury. As Huffman gets the ball over the top, a good move as she kicks it to the corner for three. No good. And this will be another foul called uh, against Plattsburgh as this one looks like it will go on Bella De Pascali. That is her third foul. So right when I mentioned Plattsburgh didn't have many players in foul trouble, yet another one in the three. And the reason why they didn't have a lot of players in foul trouble is because Coach Cole really uh, did a great job of managing their players, put a lot of different bench players in. So if they soaked up the fouls, it wasn't a big deal. It wasn't the starters who were getting in the foul trouble. Is that going to be a kickball against Olivia Suki? As Middlebury will maintain possession. Here's Davis getting it to Kaufman who shoves down Thompson, nothing called. Like you said all game, these refs are letting a lot of things go. As here's Harrison down low with a nice lefty move as she is fouled only heading to the free throw line for two. Yeah, and uh, we see a different like philosophy change here by the Panthers. Um, they're bringing the ball right at the Cardinals, making them foul, making them make tough defensive plays, dumping the ball down low, and then getting fouled or making layups, which is but which is what they've been doing uh, this entire first, or excuse me, the entire third quarter. As the first free throw was hit by Harrison and she looks to go two of two from the line. Plasberg already with four fouls in this third quarter, just one away from putting Middlebury to the free throw line and in the bonus as the second free throw is no good. But it's another offensive rebound as this one is stolen by Plasberg. Good defensive hustle by Mo Jones in the corner. As now Jones drives in, puts up the tough layup, no good. Fights for her own rebound as another jump ball as this one will get it to Middlebury. Franny Merkel coming back into the game for Taylor Clare. I expect to see Franny Merkel in this game for a lot more minutes now. She's been one of their most consistent players all season. Well now Merkel is forced to play more minutes because Taylor Clare is in foul trouble and Bella De Pascal is in foul trouble. So now it's if Coach Cole was trying to uh, hold on to her for the fourth quarter. That plan's gone. Fra uh, Merkel has to play a lot of minutes and she can't get in foul trouble. As the baseline shot is swished by Colleen Kavanagh. Now a five point lead for Middlebury. That is their largest of the night as it continues to grow. Thompson thought about the three as she drives in. Nice pass down low to Franny Merkel who puts it up. No good as Harrison comes up with another rebound. Yeah, one thing that's not growing right now is the point totals for Plattsburgh. They haven't put a single point on the board in this third quarter. Wondering if Coach Cole is going to take a timeout soon. She's got to get her team into some sort of rhythm. I've not been able to find anything for these first five minutes as Harrison hits another basket as Middlebury keeps on extending their lead. Okay, you really got to think about taking a timeout right now, and that's exactly what she's going to do. So, hey, maybe we have a, a future in coaching, maybe. Probably not. You're right. <laughs> maybe I'll, maybe you. Uh, I'll stick over here. I'll, I'll coach my 2K team to a championship on rookie level. I can't even do level. that, so on that's why level. I'll stay out of it <laughs> on rookie level. As, uh, well, as we talked about before, uh, right now, Coach Cole and Coach Seraf both talking to each other before they go in and they meet uh, with their team. Yasmin Lewis will sit down, kind of calm the troops down, and then the, co or the coach, Cheryl Cole, she'll come in, clipboard ready, ready to draw something up and get the team ready on track. And she really needs to draw up some magic right now because Plattsburgh just came out flat in this start of the second half. Well, we got to remember, there's plenty of time left in this game. You don't want to wait too long to think, oh, we have plenty of time, and just look up at the clock. There's a minute left. 
It's five minutes left in the third, so they still have another quarter plus these five minutes, but they want to get something going now because it has not been pretty so far in the second half. Yeah, and you can't leave everything uh, to chance for that fourth quarter. You can't, you know, rely on yourself thinking that, okay, we're going to catch fire in the fourth quarter. We're going to make shots. We're going to hit three-pointers, and that's how we're going to get ourselves back in the ballgame. You need to start to trim deficits right now. And, you know, just imagine if Plattsburgh had come out of the uh, half down instead of having a four-point lead. It would have been a whole different ballgame. Here's Mo Jones. Gets it to Thompson, who gets it right back up to Jax Miller at the top. Puts up the tough one-handed shot, no good. As I don't know if that was the play that Coach Cole ran up. But yeah. instead of shying away from that contact like Jax Miller did, I would have liked to have seen her kind of lean into the contact, try to get to the foul line, at least register some sort of points as Middlebury gets another easy basket. As Huffman is dropping dimes throughout this game. That's her fourth assist. Thompson for three as she is swatted by Caveney who goes up for the layup and it is good. Oh, what a great play all around by and that's, Colleen. That's a momentum play there. Uh, I didn't mean to cut you off there, Nick, but that's a momentum play, play as now Jax Miller is going to have that in her head. Now whenever she shoots, she's going to be lo thinking twice, looking twice, uh, making sure that no one's coming to block her shot. As this will be a foul against Middlebury as it will be on Alex Huffman. That is her second foul. Now both teams with four team fouls in this third quarter, so they both got to watch out with one more foul. Mo Jones will be heading to the sideline, wondering if that injury is still bothering her. She's going straight to the trainer and looks like she's going to go over to the corner as that's the first points of the half for Plattsburgh. And much needed, if I do say so myself. I mean, Plattsburgh came out in the first half, they were dominant, and now they can't get anything started, and their, their lackluster defense is causing open shots. And, you know, one way to get yourself back in the ball game is to get rebounds, but they can't even get defensive rebounds here. A nice offensive rebound by the Panthers. That's already nine offensive rebounds, as that's a beautiful finish down low by Caveney as she'll be going to the free throw line for the three point play. Franny Merkel has her second foul. Yeah, and that's one thing you can't have happen now is you can't have Claire in foul trouble and Merkel in foul trouble and Dave Pascal in foul trouble. Merkel and Dave Pascal find themselves both on the floor right now. Uh, Sarah Solo has three fouls. Dave Pascal has three fouls. Merkel has two. And I thought Claire had more. She only has one personal foul right now, so she's on the bench just to get a rest. And we just saw another offensive rebound, and it was by the per that player who attempted the free throw. That's not good boxing out right there by Plasper. Good pass over the top. Ash, there's going to be a foul called as Sarasula went up for the layup and will be heading to the free throw line for two. Now, this is a good opportunity to get some easy points. It's a... Uh, you know, a way for your team to just kind of sit back, relax a little bit, regroup, and put some points on the board, talk to each other, figure out what you're going to do on the next couple of possessions, whether it's defensive or offensive, and, and finally get back in the ball game. As the first free throw is no good. But the first step in getting free points on the board is to make your foul shots. You saw that in the men's game. Plastic men's team shot 42% from the free throw line, so wonder if there's something in the in the air here at Memorial Hall. But I don't know. But Plasper's got to step it up as the second free throw was hit by Sarasolo. Now a 10-point deficit. Yeah, and they're shooting free throws at a 50% clip right now. So you'd like to see those numbers kind of uh, get uh, get higher, get a little bit higher. Uh, but right now, I think 50% isn't terrible, but obviously it's not desirable. Now it's a 13-point lead after the made three by Kaufman. Here's Franny Merkel who puts it up as she'll be called for the travel before the basket. Yeah, I think Dave Pascal actually has to take that shot, not look for that pass, be a leader and respond, hit that three-pointer there, and, you know, get some momentum going. Now Franny Merkel is going straight to the sideline. Got some rest. I think is going to have to start putting up some threes. Got to look for Dave Pascal one of their best three-point shooters, or Jax Miller. But 
They've been straying away from it, trying to go down low, just has not been able to be finish. As that's gonna be a foul called on Taylor Clare. Not a good defensive play as that will send Harris into the free throw line for two more. So now her second foul, and now the, the forwards for the team are starting to slowly but surely pick up some fouls to the point where it could come back to haunt them. As the first free throw is swished for Harrison. Yeah, a little bit of an unorthodox free throw style, but she's shooting free throws at a pretty respectable percentage, especially for a center. As both free throws are good, as now she is the leading scorer for both teams with nine. You're going three for four from the line, and you know, as a center, you'll take that all day. DeAndre Jordan's out here looking for some tips on his free throws. Oh yeah, he could use a lot more than just tips. He could use a funnel to the basket. I think I think the NBA should be more generous. If he hits the rim, just let him count it. Oh yeah, because centers are so hard for shooting free throws. I don't condone that at all, <laughs> whatsoever. As here's the pass down low to Knox, who puts up the nice move, no good, rebounded by Claire. Still a good move by Betsy Knox on that one. Jax Miller guarded tightly, almost loses it, gets it to Taylor Claire, puts up the tough shot as she is fouled by Katherine Harrison, and that will be her third personal foul. <laughs> and the way that, or excuse me, that was on 21. Sorry to cut you off. No, you're fine. The uh, the way that Taylor Claire kind of reacted after she threw that shot almost made it seem like she didn't get fouled. She was surprised the whistle went off. His lead is now 15 for Middlebury with just a minute 46 remaining here in the third quarter. So weird that beginning of this, this half, Plattsburgh was up by four and they've only scored four points in these first eight minutes of this half. Yeah, it's really been shocking to say the least because they had that four point lead. Now they see themselves down by 13 um, and it's a completely different dynamic right now. Coach Cole, uh, Coach Cheryl Cole probably thought that she, that she had one game plan set in place to maybe run some time off the clock, get the ball down low. Now you're, you're completely changing that. Now you're gonna try to shoot threes and you're gonna try to drive a little bit more of an up-tempo game. So we'll see where they go from here as there's a whistle on the floor and it's gonna be Plattsburgh ball facing, once again, a 13-point deficit. It's a illegal screen on Maya Davis. That is her second foul. Now uh, Jackson Miller is looking to get Plattsburgh in some sort of groove. Brooke Benna turns the ball over, getting her first action of the day. This one's kicked to the corner for Caveney. Puts up the shot, no good, rebounded by Taylor Clare. So now Thompson thought about the shot, decides better of it. Gets it to Jackson Miller as Plattsburgh still looking for an offense. As Thompson thought about the three, decides not to, gets it to Taylor Clare. A lot of passing by Plattsburgh. Still no shots. That's a nice move, and the layup is a good for Sarah Sulo. Now that's that's a good offensive possession. A lot of passes, getting an easy bucket. I think there's two or three times where they could have let that three ball fly, but you can't argue when you get a layup out of out of a possession. And there's a big rebound by Thompson. Plus, we're looking to cut this lead to under 10 points before this quarter ends, as that one looks like it was tipped off of Plattsburgh, and it will be Middlebury taking over. Middlebury has the option of holding it for the last shot, as there is no shot clock. And I imagine they're gonna take full use of uh, every second of the shot clock making sure Plattsburgh can get a quick bucket at the other end. Exactly what they're doing is here's Huffman controlling play, uses the screen from Knox, and she gets it to Knox, she puts up the mid-range shot, no good. Plattsburgh has time if they're quick. Here's Jax Miller, she threw it up, she didn't realize how much time she had as there's still some time after that ball going out of bounds. Yeah, and <laughs> I think uh, Coach Cole was kind of surprised that she chucked it from a half court. She had time for two more dribbles, and two more dribbles gets you uh, much, much closer uh, to the rim than heaving up a half court prayer. As a, at the end of the third quarter, Middlebury up 45 to 34 on Plattsburgh. It was a great third quarter for Middlebury as they outscored Plattsburgh 22 to seven. Plattsburgh took more than five minutes to finally get their first basket. 
how do you expect them to bounce back into this fourth quarter? Well, they're going to shoot threes. I think that's exactly what Coach Cole's going to dry, dry, uh, draw up at this point. You know, right now your best slasher is on the bench, and that would be uh, Mo Jones. Uh, she has some sort of head injury, and uh, trainers have pulled her off the floor as of right now. Uh, Co uh, Franny Merkel's getting worked on by another trainer as well, something with maybe a, a wardrobe <laughs> malfunction or their shorts or something. Who knows? But... Uh, this is another storyline, another injury that we have uh, on the floor here for the cards. Uh, back to the three-point thing, though. You have good three-point shooters. De Pascale, Jax Miller, um, and, well, Mo Jones is uh, off the floor right now. But we've seen Merkel take three-pointers before. Um, so you do have the three-point shooters. You just have to use them now. It's going to be a... A tough comeback for Plattsburgh as they, like we mentioned earlier, they need all the wins they can get. Find themselves seventh in the SUNYAC rankings right behind Brockport. With this win, they will be tied with Brockport in wins, but Brockport still has a game in hand. This inbound will be happening right in front of us. So now on the floor, Brooke Benna for the cards. This is going to be Brooke Benna, Jax Miller, uh, number 31, Anna Thompson, Taylor Clare, and Hope Sarasolo for the cards. So here's Thompson, who almost loses that ball as she gets it back to Jax Miller with 15 remaining on the shot clock. Miller uses the screen. So here's Taylor Clare, puts up the mid-range shot, and it is good. Yes. Taylor Clare finally sets herself. And it's a good thing that she made that shot because she missed a wide open Brooke Benna from the three-point arc. She did end up hitting that shot, so you can't really complain, but you did pass up a wide open opportunity. And now Middlebury will slow things down with just 10 seconds on the shot clock. Got to get something going as the pass is down low to Davis, who puts it up, and she is fouled. Taylor Clare disagrees with the call, but I believe there was some contact, and it probably was the good call. Oh, no doubt there's definitely some contact there. It's kind of hard to uh, disagree with that. Uh, that's going to be her third foul. So, you know, not severe foul trouble right now, but something to at least watch out for. We got some Plattsburgh fans trying to mess with the, get in the heads of Maya Davis. Did not work as she swishes the first one. And it's the lone soldier out there with, <laughs> with trying to mess up the, the free throw shooter. He didn't have much support. He used to have a lot more with the, some of the Plattsburgh red zones. You miss those guys. Yeah, they haven't showed up to a lot of games here. Not a lot of basketball games. It's been all about hockey this semester. It's kind of messed up. I'm gonna have to have a talk with some people. Oh, I'll put you. I'll point you to the right direction. As a huge three-point basket there for the Cardinals is sunk by Brooke Benna, the freshman from Oakland, New Jersey. Now here's the pass down low to Davis, and she kicks it out to her teammate as Huffman has pretty much played almost every single minute. That pass sailed out of bounds. Perhaps she was looking for one of her teammates on the bench. Didn't realize that they weren't in the game. Yeah, slight possibility. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say that you're right there, but who who knows? Uh, definitely, that pass had nobody even near them, uh, and there's no intended target there. Now, Jax Miller takes the ball up the floor. 8:30 remaining here in the game as that shot is blocked. Brooke Benna is trying to do everything by herself after hitting that nice three-pointer in the last possession. Just the pass down low, kicked back out to the top. Beautiful passing right here by Middlebury, but they're not finding any groove, really. As there's 10 remaining on the shot clock, here's Kaufman, one of their best players, uses the screen, puts up the floater, no good, rebounded by Sarasulo. Now, Plasberg down just by eight points. As this pass is into Sarasulo, as there'll be a foul called against Lily Kuntz. That will be her fourth foul, so she is very close to fouling out as this one will be, as she'll be heading to the bench for some rest now. As Kaufman was also subbed out on that play. Thompson gets the pass down low to Claire, puts up the tough shot. As there's gonna be a foul, another foul called against Middlebury as Catherine Harrison can't believe it. 
And it's going to be a foul. It's on the floor, so the shot from Taylor Clear isn't registered. Another player with four fouls, wondering if she'll be finding herself on the bench anytime soon. Yeah, well, there's not a very deep bench here for Middlebury, so they can't really sub too many people in as the Hope Sarasolo converts on that lefty layup. And Plattsburgh finds themselves down by six here with a lot of time remaining in the final quarter of play. Plattsburgh remains hopeful after that one by Sarasolo. As it's stolen by Brooke Benna, she's going to have to slow things down very wisely. Sarasula thought about the shot as Plattsburgh will slow things down. 7-10 remaining as Brooke Benna for three. No good. There was a good box out right there by Middlebury. Here's Caveney decides not to go for the layup. Gets it to Harrison. Almost stolen by Plattsburgh. Good defensive play. Another solid defensive play by Sarasulo, as she will slow things down as it's off the hands of Thompson. As there's going to be a timeout called by Coach Cole. Very heads up play. Yeah, great timeout being used there. You being utilized there because if you squander possession here, Middlebury goes back and they get a, a momentum uh, bursting bucket for the Cardinals. You know, changes the game. Get the timeout. Keep the possession. Get a bucket here and keep working at that deficit. Six points, that's the closest it's been in most of this half as Middlebury came out lights out in the third quarter, but they're struggling so far. They're out this fourth. Plattsburgh has finally found a groove, and maybe it's Brooke Benna's three that got them into it. She's had a few good steals, so it's Hope Sarasulo. Don't know the exact answer, but nonetheless, Plattsburgh is back in this game. So for Middlebury here, they are 16-7 and seven on the year. Um, they have only one more game following this. They play Colby in the uh, quarterfinals for their conference, the NESCAC. And Plattsburgh will find themselves after this game with two more games against New Paltz and Oneonta. And they really need those games if they're going to find themselves in playoffs. They're going to need to win those games. Unfortunately for them, Oneonta and New Paltz are both ahead of them in the standings. It's definitely not... They still have a chance in those games. As they are definitely ahead of them, but they put up good fights against those teams. Oneonta, they lost by maybe 16 their first matchup. Still a good blowout, but New Paltz is one of the top teams. They always have a tough time playing against New Paltz. They almost lost by 30, so they're looking for a bounce-back performance, and they're going to need it if they want any chance of making it to the Suniacs. Yeah, so they find themselves in seventh place, Plattsburgh does, and they need to get to sixth for playoffs, so they need Brockport to lose one, and they need to win both in order to make playoffs, especially since they beat Brockport or earlier in the year. Those head-to-head -head matchups are huge when it comes down to the final stretch. And here's Catherine Harrison blocked by Taylor Clare. As Harrison saves it, gets it to her teammate for three, and it is good for Becca Mayhem. Yeah, it's kind of just an unlucky play there for Plattsburgh as he made a good defensive play as a block. And a lot of times, blocks go right back to the same team and they end up making a basket anyways. I, that's why I always think blocks are very uh, uh, overrated stats because it, it doesn't give you possession at all. It's not like a steal where you, you get a bucket off of it. You know, blocks, a lot of times, they go right back to the same team that had the ball in the first place as the uh, three-pointers missed and a rebound by Middlebury. I'm really surprised not to see De Pasquale in the game right now. I know she has three fouls, but there's less than six minutes remaining. She's probably their best three-point shooter along with Jax Miller. You're going to wonder if, they're, if she's going to get put into this game at any point. Spotsbury's going to have to start hitting some, some big threes if they want to get back into this one, down by nine. Here's Harrison. Nice spin moves, puts it up, no good. And now will be a shot clock violation. Great defensive possession all around by Plattsburgh. So now Sarasolo will inbounds the ball to Miller. And I understand maybe a little bit wanting to keep Dave Pascali on the bench because of those three fouls so she can play as aggressive as she wants coming back into the game. But I think you're spot on here, Nick. Five minutes left. I think you got to take the chance and put her on the floor and see if she can sink some threes especially in such a big game as there's going to be a foul called as that looks like it'll be number five on Harrison. I think she'll be fouled out for today's game. She cannot believe that call. I don't blame her. She might have gotten a good amount of ball on that one. Yeah, but 
Um, one Another thing about Taylor Clare is when she gets that ball in the, the paint area, she's always looking to shoot. Um, and that's both good and bad. Uh, a lot of times, you know, the people or the post players will put their head down, they'll try to make something happen, and they'll draw fouls. But a lot of times, you also miss some wide open three point attempts. Jax Miller, who's a great three point shooter, was wide open at the three point arc, and she was calling for the ball. You know, it, of course, you do get the foul, and you. You uh, sit one of their post players down for the rest of the game, but then again, you could have had three points on this possession if Miller hits the shot. Both free throws are good. Finally, Plattsburgh hitting some big free throws, but like you're saying, Jax Miller is such a huge player to this team. She's one of two seniors. She's got to take the leadership, take over, and let the team know that she's in this one, and she's got to put up some threes. Yeah, Plattsburgh with a very lackadaisical press there, letting their the Middlebury player dribble right down the middle of the floor. And I think this foul is going to go on Middlebury. Looks like the Middlebury player might have been holding Taylor Clare back on that one. Is this foul will be on Maya Davis? Her third foul. And I think that's a great call, even though the refs are seeing some protests here by Coach KJ Carrasco. I think that's a great call because. Claire was trying to find her way to the bucket, or to, sorry, to the ball, and she's being held back. There's going to be another foul on Maya Davis before the inbound even occurred as she shoved down Thompson. I mean, uh, but going back to that one foul call, you're allowed to box out. You're allowed to, you know, keep your, 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 you're allowed to every space on the floor. That's your right to get to that space on the floor, but you can't hold back another player with using your, just your arms which is why the call was on the floor as the first free throw was sunk by the Plattsburgh State Cardinal number 31, Anna Thompson. She's a sophomore from Poughkeepsie, New York. As the second free throw rims in and out as it's an eight point lead for Middlebury with four and a half remaining here in the game. Good move as Huffman kicks it down to Caveney. Drives in, puts up the tough layup and it is good as now this will be a full timeout taken by Middlebury. Ten point lead yet again. That was some poor defense on the Plattsburghs right there. Yeah, I can only imagine what is going through the mind of Bella De Pascali, one of the star players of the team, sitting there with three fouls and she's not getting put into the game. I mean, you know, the star players always want to be out on the floor and especially during crunch time, you know, if Coach Colt my, my counter argument to what uh, the Plattsburgh State coaching staff is doing in regards to uh, Bella De Pascali is, you know, you're going to hold her and you're going to try to keep her uh, from getting those extra fouls that puts her out of the game. But if by holding her, if the game gets too far out of control, there's no point in throwing her in there anyways. You have to at least try to trim the deficit now with her while there's still time. I will be very surprised if she is not on the floor coming out of this timeout. I didn't see her run to the table and check in. I think she's still going to be on the bench here. I, I wonder if there's something bothering her. I don't know. If, it looks like Mo Jones has an ice pack on her head. Definitely don't expect to see her for the rest of the game. And also, I think Franny Merkel has something going on with her, her lower back as she's holding a towel to it. So, Plasberg seems be a little bit worn down in this game as the three, or excuse me, the long two is put up no good, rebounded by Huffman. And now's the time to start making shots here if you're Plattsburgh, as they almost got an easy, or a, a turnover and then possibly an easy bucket. As now Plattsburgh will be called for their second team foul. Good to see them not in foul trouble. This one will go against Brooke Benna. That is her first foul of the day. She disagreed with that call, but like we always say, Players always seem to disagree with the calls as Bella De Pasquale is finally being subbed in with 4-11 remaining. And you got to look out for her. She's She's got the green light always. Good defense by Plattsburgh as the inbound is in over the top to Caveney. As Kaufman puts up the three, no good. Rebounded by Sarasula. Yeah, Miller thought twice about making that long pass, but she gets it to De Pascal and she has to shoot. She does in a three-pointer. Like I've been saying, where has yes. where has she been? She's finally on the floor, instant offense, seven-point game. Plasper's trying to get right back into this one. Hey, I've been agreeing with you every step of the way here, Nick. 
All right, sorry to take it out on you if I did. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to vent to me, man. You're preaching to the choir. Maybe I have to let Coach Cole know about it at the end of the game. Oh, yeah, you do that. <laughs> yeah, She'll uh, laugh at you. Yeah, with almost 20 years of coaching experience, uh, I'm sure she wants to hear that. As the layup is good for Maya Davis, back to a nine-point lead for Middlebury. Just feed the hot hand. I know it's only been one three, but Dave Pasquale, she does this. She hits one, and she tends to hit two or three more after that. So let, get her open, set a screen for her, and I think it will pay off as there's going to be another foul against Middlebury as Taylor Clare seems to be getting bumped around all game. Yeah, she hits the floor hard. It's not like she just has, you know, light pushes where she maybe hits the floor, but she hits the floor hard a lot and bounces right back up again. You know, and, and this being one of the last few games of the regular season, it's, you know, you're taking those hits every single game for, oh, you know, 22 games, 24 games. It's It gets rough after a while. And the first free throw is good. As now... Kira Waldman is being subbed back in for Colleen Caveney. Just over three minutes remaining. Big free throws for Plattsburgh as it's tipped. Rebounded by Plattsburgh. Another foul as this will send Sarah Sulo to the line for two. Yeah, a lot of fouls here. And now with those five fouls by Middlebury, that's going to put Plattsburgh into the double bonus. They're going to do two free throws every single time that they get fouled here. As now that Maya Davis is fouling out. Second player to foul out for Middlebury. And they still have one player who's at four in Lily Kuntz. So all of their big players have been in foul trouble through most of this game and two of them are already gone. Yeah, but our Middlebury only has a roster of 12 players. Two of them are fouled out. That brings it back down to 10. One has three fouls, so she fouls out. That brings it back down to nine. You have to keep five players on the floor. So that's going to mean that only four players are still on the bench for uh, Coach Carrasco to use. As it's almost stolen by Sarasulo. Tight defense on this press by Plattsburgh. They're really feeling it. Don't, six point deficit. Plattsburgh trying to make their way back into this game. It's going to be a double team in the corner. And yeah, now the bench is feeling it too, getting, making some noise, getting into the heads of the Panthers. And that's what the Plattsburgh needs right now, a little bit of energy to kind of will them to, to get these six points back and either knot it up or get the win. Is there going to be a foul called on Sarasulo? Not a wise play with only nine seconds left on the, on the shot clock. I guess you want to get the steal and all, but reaching plays are always tough. Yeah, especially that puts three fouls on the board for Plattsburgh, and that gives her her fourth. She's been so clutch throughout this game. Hitting her free throws, really helping the team out. Now here's Knox, kicks it to the corner as it's tipped. Huffman gets it back to Kira Wildman, and it is no good. Rebounded by Taylor Clare, comes up with another rebound. Now Jax Miller controlling play, looking for the screen from Clare. As she gets it to Sarasulo, who puts up the three, and it is good! Hope Sarasulo with the hot hand, three-point lead for Middlebury. Plattsburgh has now just cut it to a one-possession game. Oh, yeah, and that's exactly what Plattsburgh needed, that three-point bucket. Now brings the lead of Middlebury down to three, and now the whole type of... Uh, Momentum and everything has changed as we see that three-point bucket on the replay here. And Sarasulo was guarded pretty pretty heavily there. She made a tough shot. You got to credit her with the hot hand with being clutch in prime time. Great job by our crew to pick up that replay so quickly. Everyone's working, out, working hard here, so we want to give a big shout-out to all the crew members and especially our producer, Nate Winans. His first time producing, he did a great job. So big... Thank you to him for everything he's done with us. Now back to the floor with 2.05 remaining here. And Plattsburgh coming off of a huge three-pointer. Uh, Coach Crow gonna looks like she's going to drop the press once again. We gave Middlebury fits of, of the last time they had to break it. But the, uh, they think they've had more success than, than, uh, than woes with this press. 
Middlebury has, trying to break it. And a lot of times they go right up the floor and they get an easy bucket out of it. So let's see what they draw up to try to break it, break the press here. Here's the inbound to Huffman, quick passing by Middlebury as they get it over the top. As Plaza has got to watch out as Knox will look to slow things down. And now here is Huff Kaufman with the ball at the top. Just under two minutes remaining. Plaza are hoping for a big stop right here. Here's the pass to Huffman with just 10 remaining on the shot clock. They got to get something off soon. As here's Kaufman, nice move as it's picked up by Knox. Puts up the deep two. Rims in and out, picked up by Plattsburgh. As now here's Hope. Sarasula, who has been feeling it, gets it across to Jack Miller from deep. No good. Rebounded by Middlebury. Yeah, that was a good effort there by Taylor Claire. To, she couldn't get the rebound. She knew she was in bad position to at least tip it and try to see if another player could get it, but there's no one was there for the rebound for the cards. Now Middlebury, still a three-point lead, has possession with just over a minute remaining. Do you like the shot there by Miller, or do you think it was not the best decision? If she's feeling it, she's feeling it. Go up and try to tie that. You, you put the ball in the hands of your senior, and you try to make a play with five seconds on the shot clock. Middlebury fakes. Now deep three by Middlebury. Rims in and out and back in. A huge bucket by uh, number 23, Lily Coots. Plasma's got to get something going. Now you think they got to go for the three. It's here Sarah Sulu, who has the hot hand. They got to do something quick with just 45 remaining. Thompson thought about it, drives in, puts up the tough shot, no good. Rebounded by Claire, who is fouled. Don't be heading to the free throw line for two more. And uh, a couple of the Middlebury players protesting that it was on the floor. I highly disagree with that. But then again, it doesn't matter because of the, that double exactly. bonus. Claire will be setting herself for these big free throws as she misses the first one. Plattsburgh shooting just around 65% from the free throw. Exactly 65% actually. As she misses both, those are two big misses. And now Plattsburgh might have to foul soon as Middlebury can just kill as much of the clock as they want until with these 20 seconds remaining on the shot clock. Yeah, bold strategy, wasting so much time to foul. Now they're only going to have 10 seconds, and they're, they're in a two-possession game. Smart play by Middlebury right now not to put up any shots. As this three is put up, no good. Rebounded by... It looks like there will be a foul called against Middlebury, which will send Plasper to the free throw line. Not a good foul, as this one looks like it will go against number 11, Hu Alex Huffman, her third foul. Yeah, and that, that is the worst thing that Middlebury could possibly do. The clock stops, now it brings the ball all the way up to the other side of the floor, and now you get two points here. Hope, or if you're a Plastic fan, hopefully you're hoping that they get two points. Uh, but then it gets to the score to 55 to 59, they can foul real quickly. It's the, that was the worst thing you possibly do. The game's over at this point. You know, 12.8 seconds left. They, it's, there's no way that they can make up all those points if they don't follow here. As Sarah Sulo goes one of two from the line, as this is a rebound by Huffman, as that's going to be a foul against Jax Miller. It was a five-point deficit for Plattsburgh. That will be the fourth team foul, so they still have a chance on this inbound to come up with the steal as there will be a timeout taken by Middlebury as this will be a, waiting for the ref's, the ref's call. Yeah, Mid uh, Plattsburgh has to be really careful here that they don't, that Middlebury doesn't draw up a play to, to set a back screen and let one player let loose or break loose and streak all the way down the floor and hit her with a long pass. And that's what I would do if I was, if I was the Middlebury coach here. Even if it gets picked off, it doesn't matter. Just throw it deep. That way that Plattsburgh has to run, go all the way back. That's going to waste a lot of time. So if I'm them, I'm going to drop a play, let some player come off a screen, go all the way down the other side of the floor, and let it get picked off. Because who cares if they who cares if they pick it off? Who cares if it's a turnover? And all you're working on right now is just wasting that clock. And the time is on your side, and the scoreboard's on your side. As they're looking to get the inbound in, as they do get it in, as it'll be a quick foul, as this one will be on Sarah Bonner. Her first foul with 9.6 remaining, hoping for some missed free throws from Kira Waldman. Yeah, and that's the only thing that Plattsburgh can do right now is just kind of pray that 
Uh, Waltman's going to miss both free throws, get a quick bucket, and then you have to foul again. Uh, there's not a big uh, heartbeat right now here for the Plattsburgh side, but hey, first free throws missed. Now, you got to know, with Plattsburgh, they have to shoot a three after this free throw. Can't be going for twos. They've run out of time for that. And it has to be a very, very quick three at that. As the fans definitely got into the head of the player, as they will be a quick timeout by Coach Cole, as you did not see much hustle on that Plattsburgh play to get that ball up the court. So smart timeout. Well, well, the thing about it was the clock starts right when the rebound, er, right when the ball is touched. So clock started, took a little bit to actually secure the rebound, then to find an outlet pass. That's a great timeout there to stop the clock, draw something up really quickly. And it, I mean, it has to be really quick. And if you don't hit this shot, there's no sense of fouling. 8.2 seconds remaining. Many options on this Plattsburgh team to go for for this three-pointer. Obvious two players I would think of are De Pasquale or Jax Miller, but Hope Sarasulo is the leading scorer for this game with 11 points, and she felt it. She got this team back into it, cut the deficit to three just a few moments ago. She has the hot hand. Maybe it's her, but I would go with De Pasquale. I've had much faith in her throughout this game. She didn't get much playing time. Hoping, we're all hoping that she can hit one right now. Yeah, you got to send her off a double screen here, make sure that she gets wide open, but it's looking like it's going to be Jax Miller taking the three. It has to be really quickly. As she puts up the three, no good as it's rebounded by Middlebury, as that will do it for this game as the Middlebury Panthers will defeat Plattsburgh State Cardinals 59-54 to here in Memorial Hall. It's a disappointing finish for the Plattsburgh season at Memorial Hall as they will fall now with an overall record in the SUNYAC uh, to 6-11. and 11. And it's just it's tough. It's going to be a tough one to battle back. Now they're a game and a half behind Brockport. So got to hope for Brockport to lose some games. Yeah, and uh, that's what's tough about it is you don't control your own destiny. You're hoping that Brockport loses and you have to win. You know, if you're Plattsburgh, all you can do is just win those two games and let the chips fall where they may. As that will do it for this broadcast of Plattsburgh State Basketball. Alongside Tyler Clemens, I'm Nick Demergen. I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today, and we will see you next time.